We gathered in the hall as the lights dimmed and the next speaker was announced, Mark Nelson from the Radiant Energy Fund. Many already knew his name. We'd seen him on Bloomberg, on CNBC, or heard of his work with environmental progress years ago. Now he stood before us, calm and thoughtful, ready to remind us why this movement mattered and how far we had come. He began by sharing how the nuclear community had grown from a small circle of outsiders into a global network. In 2016, we were the strange ones, the loners talking about reactors and energy charts when nobody cared. Back then, most people didn't want to hear about nuclear power. Today, it's different. When we try to convince someone, they often already agree. They use the same arguments we made online years ago. The ideas have spread. We've become the cool kids, not because of image, but because the world finally began to see what we saw all along. We remembered why the Radiant Energy Fund was created, to save working nuclear plants from closing. That mission once felt impossible. Yet together, we kept plants alive, protected jobs, and preserved vital infrastructure. We stopped the bleeding. Now we're shifting our focus to the next phase, building new reactors. The movement has matured, but the purpose remains the same. Secure, clean, reliable power for generations to come. Mark reminded us where it started. It started not with big institutions, but with curiosity and one simple chart. Years ago, he had posted a comparison of electricity emissions between two nations. One, powered by nuclear energy, showed clean, steady lines. The other, dependent on renewables and fossil fuels, was chaotic and red. It wasn't complex math, but it revealed something powerful. The quiet strength of nuclear energy. The chart spread online like wildfire. We all saw it. It became one of the first viral truths of our cause. That chart, however, was just one piece of a longer story. One that belonged to us all. Many of us, like Mark, found our way through the same moment. A late night video, a conversation, a spark that changed everything. For some, it was Kirk Sorensen's talk on thorium that flipped a switch in our minds. We watched it and realized this technology wasn't just science, it was hope. Hope for the planet, energy security, a better future. That's when the decision was formed. We would dedicate our lives to nuclear energy. Over the years, we watched our ideas move from isolation to collaboration. When universities dismissed thorium as a waste of time, we persisted. When industries claimed nuclear power was too slow or too costly, we kept pushing. We studied, built, argued, and learned. We became obsessed, not in a bad way, but in the way that changes things. We believed that if we could just show people the truth, if we could make them see the power of this technology, we could change the world. And slowly, we did. The years with environmental progress were difficult, but they were defining. We fought to stop working reactors from shutting down. We learned that before we could build new ones, we had to protect the ones we had. It was a lonely fight at times, but we were never truly alone because people like us, the people in that room stood together. That unity created something new, the first global pro-nuclear movement. We remembered the meeting in Amsterdam in 2018, the moment everything began to shift. Activists came from across Europe, driven by the same urgency. Out of that meeting came something the world had never seen. A pro-nuclear demonstration in Munich, Germany. The heart of anti-nuclear sentiment. It was small at first, but symbolic. That act of defiance grew into a wave. By 2021, we were organizing global vigils. When Germany shut down three reactors, we held candlelight gatherings at consulates around the world. We stood outside in the cold, holding signs and a hope. It wasn't just a protest, it was a promise that we would not give up. Those efforts became the backbone of a larger movement, one that spread across continents. Every dot on the global map now represents an active group, Replanet, Canadians for Nuclear Energy, and countless local organizations. We are no longer scattered voices shouting into the void. We are a network, a family. As the talk continued, we turned our attention to technology. The Kandu reactor came up, a machine many dismiss as old, but one that has quietly proven itself as one of the most adaptable designs ever built. Kandu reactors don't need enriched uranium. 
they use heavy water as a moderator and can run on natural uranium. They rely on multiple small pressure tubes instead of one massive vessel, meaning they can be built and refueled more flexibly. They can even run for over a thousand days without stopping. Of course, there are challenges. The design produces more spent fuel per unit of energy, and the phrase positive void coefficient has scared off regulators for years. But those fears ignore the physics. Kandu reactors are stable, repairable, and nearly impossible to melt down in the traditional sense. What they need now isn't replacement, it's improvement. That's where Anil comes in. Advanced nuclear energy for enriched life. Clean Core's innovation uses a blend of thorium and halyu fuel. High assay, low enriched uranium in an almost unmodified Kandu fuel bundle. The design doesn't require a new reactor, just a smarter core. The result is higher burn-up, less waste, fewer refueling interruptions, and lower costs. It even cuts plutonium production. For countries worried about proliferation, that's a game-changer. This isn't a theory. The fuel exists. Texas AANDM has already produced thorium halyu pellets. They are waiting for irradiation testing at Idaho National Laboratory. Data from these tests will set new thorium fuel performance records. If successful, commercial use could begin as early as 2025. Imagine that profitable, scalable thorium energy is within reach in just a few years. We also realized Canada is in a unique position. The country has refurbished most of its reactors, building strong supply chains and industrial know-how. Even Pickering, once considered too old to save, is now being reconsidered thanks to pressure from Canadian activists and the global energy crisis. With Kandu's modular core and modernized fuel, Canada could lead a quiet nuclear renaissance. Clean Core's team includes veterans from across the world, former Canadian regulators, MIT fuel experts like Dr. Karush Shervan, and Indian nuclear leaders like Dr. Anil Kakudkar. Together they represent decades of experience, people who know how to transform designs into functioning plants. And India's example gives us hope. While many nations struggle with billion dollar delays, India builds reactors cheaper than coal plants using Kandu based designs. They've proven what's possible. When we think about the future, it's clear this partnership between the US, Canada and India could unlock something extraordinary. Using thorium and halyu, we can revive proven reactor designs and expand clean power across the developing world. Imagine reliable energy lighting up entire regions in Africa and Asia, power without pollution, politics or dependence on unstable markets. Of course, we know innovation must pay its own way. Physics is not a charity, and neither is the energy market. For thorium to thrive, it must make economic sense. The good news is, Anil does just that. It works within an existing system, saving costs while creating real value. It's not about fantasy designs decades away, it's about using what we have now to shape the future. And there's another benefit. By using thorium as fuel, we open the door to refining rare earth elements safely and locally. The same element that powers reactors can free up supply chains for electric cars, wind turbines, and electronics. Energy independence and industrial growth can go hand in hand. We realized, as Mark spoke, that this isn't just a technical revolution, it's a human one. The breakthroughs in materials, fuel and design are real, but the greater achievement is the community that made them possible. The true revolution began when ordinary people cared enough to act. From the first thorium video to the first candlelight vigil, every moment built the foundation for what we see today. We have already won the cultural battle, the world is listening now, but winning the peace will take focus patience and collaboration. It will take the same spirit that carried us from isolation to influence. We have to keep building, testing, sharing data and showing results. We have to prove again and again that nuclear works, not just in theory, but in practice, in profit and in people's lives. As applause filled the room, we felt something more than pride. We felt a connection to each other, to the past and to the future we're building. The movement that once began with a single YouTube video and a few lonely voices has become a worldwide effort to power the planet. We looked around and knew the truth. 
The nuclear revolution didn't start in labs or government offices. It started in rooms like this, among people like us, long before the world was ready to see it. And now the world is watching. We've come full circle, from outsiders with ideas to a global movement shaping the world's energy future. The revolution isn't in technology alone, but in the people who believe, build, and persist. Together, we've lit the path forward. Now it's time to power the world and keep that light burning.